we will learn about him going back to many centuries to learn about a great teacher who taught the world about the simple middle path to happiness in life there is no one in the world who wouldn't like to know the secret of happiness and i believe you and me are in the pursuit of finding happiness in our life and let us see how gautama buddha who was a seeker of truth found the secret of happiness in his life gautam buddha who taught his disciples at banaras in india in the 6th century bc was indeed one of the remarkable teachers of all history everywhere people's minds were thinking about new things everywhere they were waking up out of traditions of kingships and asking the most penetrating questions and it is this time that gautam buddha think about what is the ultimate meaning of being happy in order to understand his life we have to go back to his childhood days siddhartha gautama was the son of an aristocratic family which ruled a kingdom on the himalayan slopes he was married to yashodara he lived peacefully in his palace surrounded by beautiful gardens and fields so he had a beautiful life he was never he was never shown what is sadness all about what is death what is misery and he had all sumptuous meals and bombs of the palace his parents made sure that he sees only happy things he was married to yashodara one day he went out in his chariot and saw some things which shook him first he saw an old man bent with age his charioteer explained that everyone had to grow old one day then he saw a sick man and his charioteer explained that everyone could fall sick thirdly he saw a dead man and learned that this was indeed what comes at the end of each one's life so anyone can fall ill anyone can get old age anyone can die these things he never knew as he was living within the palace without knowing the realities of the world realities of life finally siddhartha so an ascetic who looked calm and peaceful since the desire to become an ascetic was born in him with time the desire became stronger you know one day he got a chance to move out of the palace to see the city and the city surroundings and the charioteer was taking him and while they were traveling he saw a man who is very old sick he saw a man who is dead he saw another person who is uh, bent with old age he saw also an ascetic a swami who looked quite calm and peaceful and happy meditating meditating 
he wanted to go into the mountains and live like an ascetic at the same time one day his son was born there was a great joy in the kingdom so he also wanted to live like an ascetic however buddha had made up his mind to leave his life of luxury behind and become an ascetic he went softly to the threshold of his wife's chamber and saw her by the light of a little oil lamp sleeping sweetly surrounded by flowers with their infant son in her arms so buddha realizes that he also should become an ascetic and acquire happiness in his life so he leaves all the luxuries of the palace he leaves all the human pleasures that he thought would give him happiness now which no more gives him happiness he leaves his kingdom he leaves his family and he goes to become an ascetic at last he turned away and went out into the bright moonshine and mounted his horse and rode off into the world very far he rode that night and dismounted beside a sandy river that he cut off his flowing locks with his sword removed all his ornaments and sent them and his horse and sword back to his house so he traveled a, a lot and he reached beside a sandy river there he wanted to cut off all his relationship with the palace and his people and he removed all his ornaments he removed uh, his sword and all that is associated with it and the horse he sent back to the palace he met a man in rag clothes and exchanged clothes with him and so having divested himself of all worldly entanglements he was free to pursue his search for wisdom so he gave up everything all what he had as assets he gave up everything his gold ornaments uh, his clothes just only what is necessary he had with him he made his way somewhere southward to the place where hermits and teachers gathered in a hilly spur of the vindhya mountains there lived a number of wise men in a warren of caves and imparting their knowledge by word of mouth so he traveled towards vindhya mountains where many hermits lived they used to live there meditate they used to teach people and impart their knowledge by word of mouth gaudama became versed in all the great philosophies of his age but his acute intelligence was dissatisfied with the solutions offered to him so meanwhile he learned all the philosophies and great philosophers in the world and all the remedies that they give in order to attain happiness and none of these remedies that the philosophers taught him and gave him satisfied him he took five disciple companions to the jungle and there he gave himself up to fasting and penance his fame spread like the sound of a great bell hung in the canopy of the skies so his fame spread all over the world but it brought him no sense of truth achieved so though he studied the philosophies of different people that never satisfied him he took five disciples with him and started to live in the jungle he started living fasting and penance and prayer etc but that never satisfied him one day he was walking up and down trying to think in spite of his weak state suddenly he fell unconscious when he recovered he realized fasting and starving himself will not help him gain wisdom so one day he was doing so and what happens 
he was, he was walking up and down trying to think about uh, trying to think about what is the true secret of happiness he was thinking and thinking he, go, he collapsed and then he realized that his fasting and life of penance would not give him the wisdom that he desired for he decided to eat normal food and look for another path to find the truth he had realized that whatever truth a man may reach is reached by best by a nourished brain in a healthy body so he realized the truth that a peaceful and a calm mind will be attained only if we have a healthy body when the mind grapples with great and complex problems it makes its advances step by step with but little realization of the gains it has made until suddenly with an effect of abrupt illumination it realizes its victory so it happened to gautama so he should live normal life normally eating sufficient food meditating and a stage of meditation comes in which he comes to attain illumination illumination means a kind of knowledge that he receives from the almighty a kind of wisdom that he receives that is called a, a state of illumination so it happened to gautama also he had seated himself under a great tree by the side of a river when this sense of clear vision came to him that is why that tree is called bodhi vrsha bodha a kind of consciousness he got a kind of right knowledge about things it seemed to him that he saw life plain he is said to have sat all day and all night in profound thought and then he rose up to impart his vision to the world so he sat under that tree meditating reflecting and he got illumined and then he got up in order to teach the world to impart the wisdom that he received from the enlightenment that he had the starting point of his teaching was his own question as a fortunate young man why am i not completely happy it was an introspective question the question is began from himself why am i not happy though he had all the pomps he had all the uh, luxuries he had all possessions gold silver diamonds of the palace still why am i not happy he asked himself he began teach people he said all sufferings is due to greedy desires greediness all suffering is due to greediness if we are not greedy we will be suffering less he said of all the individuals as long as human beings crave things they will know sorry and will not be completely happy as long as human beings crave things they will know sorrow and will not be completely happy once we start a craving for things i want more and more and more and more we will never be happy once we have one thing we will look out for another thing for happiness nothing will ever satisfy us there are three principal forms that the cravings for life took and they all caused sorrow so he says there are three principal things that the craving for life took and all of this cause sorrow the first why are we sorrowful why are we not happy the first thing is a desire of the appetite and greed the second is the desire for immortality and the third is the craving for personal success worldliness and avarice so this is what we found as an answer for our sorrow and what could be 
the antidote for this. How should we become happy? That's what he taught next. All these forms of desire had to be overcome to escape from the distress of life. When they are, they are overcome, then serenity of soul, happiness of soul, nirvana, the highest good was attained. Nirvana was attained. He taught. Gautama's disciples declared that he was a Buddha, that he is an enlightened being. He preached an eightfold path. That is, eight things one could follow to lead the right way of life, happy life. They are the right viewpoint, the right values, the right speech, the right action, the right livelihood or way of earning, the right effort, the right mindfulness or mental ability to see and understand things, and the right concentration or state of meditation and enlightenment. So, my dear friends, in this lesson, we have been uh, learning about Gautam Buddha and his childhood days and how he found his life in the palace as something meaningless and he could find himself out of place because he was searching for the right value of life, he was searching for happiness and as an enlightened person he found happiness through his eightfold path. He also found there are three reasons for being sorrowful in our life. I hope you have understood this lesson. We will get back to this lesson as we come live. So please study the lesson and come prepared for the live session. God bless you. Take care. Goodbye.